What do the batteries in your cell phone, car, or flashlight have in common with the combustion reactions that help us meet our essential energy needs? Well, they both have in common that they're related to energy, energy and chemistry. In this lesson, I'm going to introduce many of the basic ideas necessary to explore the relationship between chemical changes and energy. And I will focus most of the discussion on thermal energy. So thermochemistry is the study of this relationship, the relationship between chemistry and energy. Now sometimes the useful product of a reaction is not a substance, sometimes it's heat. So during a chemical reaction, bonds are breaking, the bonds of the reactants are breaking, and that requires us to put in energy to break those bonds. And when the bonds are broken, then new bonds are formed. And when new bonds are formed, energy is released. And in this reaction, more energy is being released as what's required. So this is an exothermic reaction. So heat is on the right-hand side of the arrow. We're producing heat in this reaction. Bonds are forming, releasing more heat, uh, releasing more energy than what it took to break those bonds initially. Now, if it took more energy to break those bonds, we would have an endothermic reaction. So heat would be on the left. It would be a reactant. We would need to put in more heat than what we got out of the reaction. So what is energy? Let's define it. It's two things. It's the ability to do work and or produce heat. So, uh, so this is just a, a real basic definition of energy. We're going to break this apart into the finer components of this, the work and the heat. But here are just a couple of types of energy, and you've probably heard of these before. The first type of energy is potential energy, and that's energy due to position or composition. So a squished spring or a stretched rubber band, a roller coaster sitting at the top of a hill, or chemicals before a reaction, our potential energy. Kinetic energy is energy due to motion. So that same roller coaster moving, traveling down the hill um, is kinetic energy and thermal energy of a substance. So when particles are moving in a substance, they have thermal energy, they have kinetic energy, and that's heat. Um, that's what causes the temperature to, to be hot or cold in a, a substance, is how fast those particles are moving. So now we're gonna take a look at some of the laws of thermodynamics. We're gonna focus on the first one. So thermodynamics definition is the study of heat and temperature and the relation to energy and work. And there are four laws. There's the zeroth, which deals with thermal equilibrium. There's the first, which is conservation of energy. The second, which deals with entropy. And the third also deals with entropy. And we'll get to those in a different video. The first law of thermodynamics is what we are gonna focus on here. And that states that the total energy of the universe is constant. It's really not going to affect us a whole lot because we are going to be focusing on one tiny little aspect of that universe called the system. The law of conservation of energy states that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Instead, it's converted from one form to another. And one thing we get to do in thermochemistry is divide the universe into two parts, the system and the surroundings. If we define the chemicals in the beaker as the system, the surroundings may include the water where the beaker, uh, where the chemicals are dissolved, um, the beaker itself, the bench where the beaker sits, the air in the room, and so on down the line. We can define the system as anything, a glass of ice water, um, an ice cube, the person drinking the ice water. And this is how we keep track of the energy changes. We identify the system and the surroundings. And it's just two parts. So if we take the system plus the surroundings, we get the universe. And according to the first law of thermodynamics, the total energy of the universe stays constant. So the system and the surroundings are just exchanging energy. So the system is the portion under investigation. That's the portion we are looking at. And we can define it as whatever we want. The surroundings are everything else. Now, there are three types of systems. And remember, the system is the portion that is under investigation, so the portion that we are looking at. In an open system, matter and energy can be exchanged with the surroundings. So if you're doing a chemical reaction that produces carbon dioxide, and the carbon dioxide just leaving the beaker, that is an open system. Matter and energy are being exchanged with the environment. In a closed system, 
energy can be exchanged with the surroundings, but not matter. So it would be like a reaction that's taking place with the lid on. So the carbon dioxide has to stay in there, but heat could be transferred in and out of that system. Now, in an isolated system, an isolated system is kind of like a really good thermos. Matter can't leave and energy cannot be exchanged with the surroundings. So if you put hot coffee into an isolated system, that coffee will stay hot because no energy has been released to the environment. Now, it's really difficult in thermodynamics to know exactly how much energy a system has. It's impossible to know how much energy a system has. So chemists focus on mainly the change in energy. Think of it like an ocean. It's difficult to know the exact volume of an ocean, but if I dump a liter of water into the ocean, I know that it just gained a liter of water. So the change is plus one liters. So we're gonna look at a lot of things in terms of the change. And the change in energy of a system is the final energy minus the initial. Change is defined as final minus initial. So here's an equation that we use to calculate the change in energy of a system. Change or delta E is equal to Q plus W. So what do Q and W represent? Well, heat is represented by the letter Q. Heat is when thermal energy is transferred. So we have the transfer of thermal energy that's symbolized by the letter Q. And W is um, the symbol for, the, the letter symbol for work. And work is when a force acts on something, causing it to move. So we have Q and W. Those are the two ways that we can, the two things we can combine to calculate the change in energy. Remember, the definition of energy is the ability to transfer heat or do work. So if we have a positive Q or positive heat, that means heat is transferred to the system. So heat is being added to the system. The system is gaining heat. So heat is being transferred to the system. And the positives and negatives are really important for this. A negative Q is when heat is transferred away from the system. So the system releases heat. Um, any uh, reaction that feels hot has a negative Q because that system is releasing energy, releasing heat, so it gives off heat. Now if we have a positive W, we're looking at work now, a positive W, that means that work is being done on the system. Um, so if we have a gas and we're squeezing the gas, we are doing work on the system. A negative W is when the system is doing work on the surroundings. So if we are doing a chemical reaction that produces a gas and it's pushing out on the atmosphere, the system is doing work on the surroundings and we have a negative W. So this is all centered around what is happening to the system. Um, the system, it's from the system's perspective. If it's giving off heat, it's a negative value. If it's doing work on the surroundings, it's a negative value. So remember, the positives and negatives are very important. Now, if we have the delta E of the system, it's going to equal the opposite, the negative delta E of the surroundings. And that, that it sounds complicated, but really what happens is if we're losing energy in the system, that means the surroundings are gaining the exact same amount of energy. That's why we have that equal sign there. So they're gaining the exact same amount of energy. One is losing it, the other is gaining it, or if... One is gaining it, the other is losing it. We're gonna take a little side venture off here and talk about state functions because um, it's, it, it'll be important more later on, but right now I just wanna define it and kind of explain it in terms of heat and energy. Um, so a state function is only dependent on the initial and final values. Um, the path doesn't matter. And like I said, later on this will be more important, but I really wanna define it now. Delta E is a state function. It doesn't matter how you get that change. Um, you could gain a bunch, lose a bunch, gain a bunch, lose a bunch. The net is really what matters. The total, the sum of everything is really what matters. Q and W are not state functions. So the path, um, the way that you get the Q and the way that you get the W, that does matter. So let's take a look at the units of energy. Now the units of energy can be traced back to the definition of kinetic energy, which is one half times the mass of the object times the velocity squared. So the units of this definition, the units of this equation are kilograms and meters per second squared. 
And it turns out that one kilogram meter squared per second squared, so one of these is equal to one joule. And the joule is going to be the unit of energy that we will use. And there are a couple different units of energy that you've probably heard of. So um, let's take a look at how those compare to the, the joule of energy. And the joule will be the standard unit of energy that we will um, be doing uh, using in all of our calculations. So the first conversion is the calorie. So one calorie uh, um, is equal to 4.184 joules. And it's not the type of calorie that you and I are used to seeing on a nutrition facts label. The, the calorie that you and I are used to seeing on a nutrition facts label is a calorie with a big Z or a kilocalorie. Uh, so one big Z calorie, one kilocalorie is equal to a thousand of those little C calories. So 4.184 joules for each little C calorie. Now, when you turn on the lights in your home or you use, uh, you plug in your phone and charge it, you're using electricity that you pay for by the kilowatt hour. And one kilowatt hour is about 3.6 times 10 to the six joules, um, which costs about 10 cents for each kilowatt hour. So when you get your energy bill, um, you can hopefully kind of picture it in terms of um, kilowatt hours and joules, which is the, the unit that we will be using the most. So let's do a little bit of practice with energy, heat, and work. If we have a system that releases 125 joules of heat, so this is an exothermic reaction, while 104 joules of work is done on the system, calculate the change in the internal energy. So we're calculating the energy change. The way we do that is by setting up our equation. Delta E is equal to the Q plus the W. So the heat transferred plus the work done um, on the system or by the system. So here we have the heat being transferred. The, the system is losing 125 joules of heat. So the system is losing that amount of heat. This is going to be a negative value. So negative 125 joules. And we're going to add 104 joules because now work is being done on the system. So we're going to add 104 plus a negative uh, 125 joules and we get negative 21 joules is the answer to this question. Here's another practice problem. A system undergoes a process consisting of two steps. So step one, the system absorbs 75 joules of heat while 35 joules of work is done on it. In the second step, the system absorbs 35 joules of heat while performing 72 joules of work. We want to calculate the change in, in internal energy of the overall process. So in step one, because the system is absorbing 73 joules, we ha this has to be a positive number, and 35 joules of work is done on it, so that is also a positive number. So we get 108 joules as the total amount of change in energy. Now in step two, we have 35 joules of um, heat is absorbed by the system. So that would be a positive number. The system is increasing in the amount of heat and it is performing 72 joules of work. So it's losing that energy. So this is gonna be a negative for step two, negative 72 joules. Um, so if we add up the two, the heat and the work um, for step two, we get negative 37 joules. Now we want to know the total change in energy for the whole for all the processes. So we take 108 minus 37 joules and we get 71 joules. So 71, a positive 71 is the overall delta E for these processes. 